Hi everyone. Today I am showing you the Books of Wonder 100th Anniversary Edition of The Wonderful Wizard of Oz. Um, this is actually very difficult to get hold of in the UK, so I really had to hunt it down. I particularly wanted this version. As you can see, it's the dusk jacket is a bit faded and torn here, despite that it was sold as new to me. This is one of the reasons I will no longer buy books on Amazon. Anyway, the reason I wanted this particular edition is it is kind of a facsimile of the original first edition of The Wonderful Wizard of Oz, written by L. Frank Baum and illustrated by W. W. Denslow. It's not an exact facsimile. There are some differences, but that's, um, it's quite close. It's got the original Denslow cover. Obviously, the, the, the original edition didn't have Books of Wonder on the spine. Um, this is also a bit wider and taller than the first edition of Wizard of Oz, and of course, uh, originally didn't have the gold on the pages or the green bookmark ribbon. But um, what I particularly like about this edition, um, or the original edition of the Wizard of Oz, is the feature it has with the illustrations. So because it's out of copyright, you can get lots of different editions of The Wizard of Oz. A lot of them have black and white illustrations or original illustrations, but none of them seem to repeat this feature that the original had. So the Land of Oz is divided into different sections, uh, countries, so like Munchkin Land uh, in the east, Gillikin Country in the north, Quadlin Country in the south, Winky Land in the west, um, and they're all different colors. Munchkin Land is, is represented by blue. Uh, obviously, the center of Oz, the Emerald City, is green. The south, the uh, Quadling Country, is red. And Winky Country, it, Winky Land, is yellow. And as Dorothy travels through the different lands of Oz, the two-tone illustrations by Denslow actually change color. So... You get to the Emerald City, of course, everything is bright, bright green. And in Winky Land, everything is yellow. And in Munchkin Land, everything is supposed to be blue. Um, for some reason, it's a, the two-tone picture is actually sort of this pale green color. I don't know if this is just the Books of Wonder edition, or that's how it was in the original as well, like a greeny turquoise color. But you've also got these full color plates um, as well. And when she's in Munchkin Land, full color plates have a lot of blue in them. Um, like that. And when, of course, she's in um, the Emerald City, there's bright green. And um, of course, when she goes to face the Wicked Witch of the West in Winky Land, Everything is yellow. And I really like this feature. I, as I said, um, I haven't found many editions that re recreate this feature other than the Books of Wonder edition or, or others that try to recreate the original edition with Denslow's original illustrations in color. Um, so most people know the story of The Wizard of Oz thanks to the 1939 movie uh, with Judy Garland. There are some differences in the book, though, um, which, uh, I mean, the most famous of which being her ruby slippers in the movie are actually silver shoes in the book. Uh, the differences are there are actually two good witches. There's a good witch of the north and a good witch of the south. Uh, the good witch of the north goes unnamed in the book, and of the good witch of the south is Glinda the Good, who in the movie is the good witch of the north. Um, the Wicked Witch of the West is a constant antagonist in the movie version, uh, whereas in the book, the Wicked Witch of the West only shows up after the wizard sends them to Winky Land to go and assassinate the Wicked Witch of the West for him. Um, and the witch is actually portrayed is very different to how she appears in the film. So this is the Wicked Witch of the West. As you can see, very different. She only has one eye. She doesn't have green skin. She doesn't have yellow skin either, but that's one of the two-tone <laughs> pictures of her. 
She still meets her demise in the same way. Dorothy throws a bucket of water over her and then she melts. There are also lots of other little adventures they go on throughout the book, which are not in the movie, which are a lot of fun. After the wizard uh, disappears in his balloon, uh, they have to go and find Glinda the Good. She doesn't just turn up in uh, in the Emerald City and help her and help her get home. No, she, and so they actually travel south. They go through dainty China country, where everyone is made out of dainty China and is very fragile. Um, and then they go through the forest, where the lion becomes the king of the beasts after he's got his courage from the wizard. And eventually they get to Quadling Country, which is the country that Glinda the Good lives in, and they meet the Quadlings, which are not very pleasant people. Um, they're also small, they have no arms, and they're able to extend their heads to attack them, to attack the friends. Eventually they meet Glinda the Good, who, who tells Dorothy how to use her silver shoes to get home back to Kansas. Another major difference between the book and the film is Oz in the book is a real place, not a dream that she has after bumping her head during a tornado. Um, the tornado lifts up the house and she lands in Oz all the same, but it's a, but is treated as a real place in the books that Dorothy actually goes to. And then when she returns home, everyone treats her as though she has been missing Now, despite being written in 1900, well, despite coming out in 1900, it holds up really, really well. Uh, they're one of the, if you, I know, when she's in Kansas, everything is this black and white sepia tone, and I, they actually kept that in the movie as well, where they start the movie in black and white and sepia, and I quite like that as well. Um, it holds up really well. I, I recently lent my uh, paperback version, not this version, uh, to my then nine-year-old niece, uh, who really, really enjoyed the book, um, despite being oh, well over 100 years old now. Very easy to understand. Children really enjoy it. And there's even stuff in here I feel ad adults, if they're so inclined, can get a lot out of the story as well. Baum actually wrote 14 Oz books before he passed away. There are 40 Oz book, official Oz books altogether, um, which are called the famous 40. But Baum wrote 14 of them. I hope to get hold, possibly all of them at some point. I've got a few of them already, and hopefully we'll be able to show you some more of them, particularly some of the ones which you might not know the story um, of, because they were not in the 1939 Judy Garland movie. But there still might be some things you'll find familiar Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. Please click like and subscribe.